So, we have been doing a Ising model in, uh, uh, <coughs> in the mean field theory and in mean field theory what we found out is that the, there is a finite temperature at which uh, the system becomes a say ordered magnet all spins in one direction with a finite magnetic moment m, m sub 0. So, that is uh, what uh, we showed here um, depending uh, on whether you are above this value of T c uh, or below. If you are above then you have a solution only m equal to 0, if you are below it then you start picking up solution and as uh, you come down in temperature the intercept becomes uh, happens at a larger and larger distance and at very low temperatures as you can see this intercept will not change much because tan hyperbolic will saturate. So, then uh, uh, you are basically at a fully saturated uh, uh, ferromagnetic state where all spins are uh, completely up. Okay. So, so, at 0 temperature of course, uh, every spin uh, will give you plus 1. So, the total moment will be just n all spins up. <coughs> okay. So, this this analysis can be taken a bit further uh, which is actually very relevant because there is a famous theory uh, by Ginzburg and, and, and Landau where they uh, expanded the free energy close to T c uh, in terms of something called uh, an order parameter. An order parameter is something which is 0 below T c which is non zero below T c and 0 above T c. So, that is like magnetization here magnetization is above T c 0 magnetization below T c is non zero. So, this is a quantity by which you can distinguish between the spontaneously ordered state and the disordered state which is like a paramagnet. Now, so they what they did was that they wrote down the free energy in an approximate uh, manner just wrote down as a polynomial in, in this order parameter and their derivatives uh, that are allowed by the symmetry. Nevertheless, I, we will not uh, do that, but we will do something analogous to it, uh, which is that what we will uh, do now is to uh, just expand free energy that we got from the mean field theory uh, to second order uh, to fourth to order uh, fourth order in, uh, in the uh, magnetization and this is what you will get. So, what you will get is uh, f by n, so free energy density for example, per part per uh, uh, spin is uh, some constant uh, <coughs> plus this m square j tilde into beta j tilde minus 1 plus c m to the power 4. Now, if you are uh, if you look at your uh, graph of this uh, this quantity uh, on the right hand side constant you can just absorb and just set it to 0 uh, absorb inside the energies. Uh, so, what you have is f versus m plot in two situations where beta j tilde is greater than 1. So, the coefficient of this m square term is positive. So, coefficient of of m square positive greater than 0. In that case you get this first curve which is like a parabola. Uh, <coughs> and then of course, this m to the power 4 term which will make it much steeper than a parabola. Uh, and uh, then there is only one minimum of this, you want to minimize the, the free energy that is the solution. So, uh, m equal to 0 is the only solution. So, that means m equal to 0, which means that uh, it is a disordered state, uh, you are actually above your T c. So, that is uh, beta, beta j tilde uh, greater than 1. Now, in the other case where beta j tilde uh, uh, less than 1 that is uh, see j tilde is uh, 1 by k b t c. So, t less than t c. So, this is t greater than t c. So, in that case you will uh, land up with uh, a curve which is like this. The free energy looks like this with with the minimum at uh, m equal to 0 has now become a maximum local maximum and uh, that uh, the the act minima uh, the, the minimum has now gone into two sides uh, which is symmetric uh, this curve is symmetric remember it is a even function. So, 
minus m naught and plus m naught are the two minima now. So, that means, you have a situation uh, where uh, you can have um, uh, <coughs> if I absorb the constant into 0, then I will have uh, this kind of a situation plus m naught and minus m naught. Okay. <coughs> So, then uh, then you have uh, just just uh, uh, these two minima these are these are the solutions. So, in that case m not equal to 0 uh, equal to m not okay, and the system is spontaneously magnetized. So, just by expanding the free energy and looking at the coefficient of the quadratic term in the order parameter this is m here is the order parameter which is non 0 below T c and 0 above T c, one can actually tell whether the system is uh, uh, spontaneously ordered or not. And at the point where uh, this uh, ordering takes place, uh, where the, the coefficient goes from positive to negative, uh, you will have an order and that is where the T c is, that is how T c is found in this kind of a theory. This is a very celebrated uh, theory by Ginzburg and Landau, which was uh, which has actually helped uh, uh, understand phase transition and critical phenomena uh, enormously. <coughs> so, this is again the same thing from that one can actually do more uh, if you set del f del m equal to 0 del f del m equal to 0 you can find out the value of m naught and uh, you can see that m naught square is proportional to T minus T c it is just one line calculation. I leave it for you to do and that means, m naught goes as T minus T c to the power half. This exponent half in mean field theory is always half and this is called the beta exponent, this exponent is half in mean field theory. Similarly, you can keep the magnetic field, do the expansion and calculate del m del h uh, which gives you chi. <coughs> and uh, that there you will find that chi goes as uh, 1 by uh, T minus T c and that is uh, that means, this exponent that means, chi goes as T minus T c to the power minus 1. So, that exponent is called gamma that gamma exponent is 1. So, this these exponents are actually uh, measured experimentally uh, close to T c this is uh, how they behave and uh, uh, in mean field theory you can actually find out the coefficient the these uh, exponents and these exponents are uh, uh, beta equal to half and uh, gamma equal to 1. <coughs> this picture on the left actually shows you how greater than T c how it behaves less than T c how it behaves. Uh, from mean field theory you can work it out and then of course, you can work out the entire graph and this is uh, remarkable uh, because this is uh, the graph for uh, uh, order parameter m the magnetization here versus T by T c and at T by T c equal to 1 uh, you will see the and this say this is m by m naught at 0 temperature this is full m naught. So, this will be 1 and then slowly it will come down and it will come down very rapidly close to the point 1. So, this is the point 1. Okay. So, so, this is uh, that is uh, that is 1 that is T equal to T c. So, this is uh, how it happens and the, here if you find out m naught as a function of T, you will see that it will be T minus T c to the power half, which is uh, again that, that exponent uh, uh, half close to T c, uh, this is how it, it uh, behaves. <coughs> this is a graph you will see in many many places in phase transition uh, how m goes as uh, varies with t 
and typically in many places you will find this t minus t c to the power half behavior and it is sort of universal in um, in certain class of systems which I mean there are caveats, but in the mean field theory it is always t minus t c to the power half. So, if you find a curve uh, for an order parameter behaving like this, then you can uh, realize that this is like a mean field uh, transition, mean field phase transition that is happening. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, now, I want to show you something which is a, a very simple calculation, but uh, this is one of the rare cases wh where one can solve a model, a spin model exactly. Uh, and that is uh, just for the for showing you do not have to remember the calculations, neither do you have to find out the uh, have to repeat and cram all these things. Just look at the calculations, it is simple, it is doable and it is a rare opportunity to do an exact solution and that is uh, that also reveals something uh, remarkably interesting. So, let us just summarize uh, what we found from uh, mean field theory. So, mean field results are mainly this, there is a finite t equal to t c uh, where spontaneous magnetization occurs right. So, T c is finite, where magnetism magnetic moments are uh, finite, total moment is finite. And the other thing is that the exponent beta uh, of half and gamma uh, equal to half, uh, gamma equal to 1. Uh, so, this is uh, gamma means uh, susceptibility goes as uh, T minus T c to the power minus gamma. So, that exponent gamma is uh, 1. Okay. Now, what I do is to uh, solve this model in one dimension exactly and show what happens to contrast it with the uh, solution that I obtained from the mean field theory. Again I am repeating that you do not have to <coughs> do this calculation, if you like you can do it, uh, but it is just a very simple calculation, beautiful calculation and uh, let me show you how it, it is done. Uh, so, so again you go back to the model uh, uh, with the with a field and uh, field is written as h here this is the field. So, so the model is uh, j s i dot s j uh, h ising j s i s i plus 1 minus h um, since it is one dimensional I, as I said I can write it as s i s i plus 1, no bond is now double counted. Now, the and this is the magnetic field. <coughs> okay. So, partition function as we all know how to calculate uh, is basically uh, so, all possible uh, configurations you have to sum over them and uh, so this is S 1 uh, from minus 1 to plus 1, so minus 1 and plus 1. So, there is no continuous summation just minus 1 and plus 1 S 2 similarly minus 1 plus 1 and so on S n minus 1 to plus 1 it is your minus beta uh, this uh, this beta times this uh, h which is uh, which is written here as e of i this curly bracket means all configurations of s i. So, all the s i. So, s i is e i s i is written here. Okay. So, beta I can also write this beta h i z. Okay. 
a b minus beta h i c. This board is not very comfortable, but let me just uh, try to make it simple. Write it again. Huh. So now this is this is what you are doing. Uh, then you can recast this uh, this partition function as uh, as as is done here. All you have done is that you have written this h, the summation over h, uh, summation over s i. You have repeat, re repre represented by half s i uh, plus s i plus one, which means every spin is now summed uh, twice but i and i plus 1 are t put together. So, that is why the half uh, comes. Okay. So, that is exactly what has been uh, done in this, this line in this, this line. Okay. Now, is the trick this trick is uh, was uh, first uh, uh, done by uh, uh, Kramers and Vanier two of the greatest uh, physicists of uh, the last century and these uh, trick uh, uh, um, implies that you <coughs> write a 2 by 2 matrix defined by this. This is uh, written here, this is the matrix S between S and S prime. So, the matrix elements of S and S prime, S and S prime will take values plus 1 minus 1 both like s i s s p s prime and it is written as e to the power beta uh, j see the Hamiltonian had a minus that is why you get a plus here okay. e to the power beta j s s prime uh, plus half beta h s plus s prime. So, that is what uh, this, this, this. So, this is an operator you have to take s and s prime on both sides uh, and find out the matrix element for the four matrix elements. So, these four are plus one when s and s prime are both plus one they are minus one and one is plus one and the other one is minus one okay. and this is symmetric plus s uh, p 1 p 1 2 is equal to p 2 1 p 1 2 is this p 2 1 is this. So, that matrix uh, you can easily calculate uh, s and s prime both for example, this one both positive j s s prime. So, it is beta j and then both of them are plus 1. So, 1 plus 1 divided by 2 is just h. So, j plus h similarly for the others. So, that is the, the so for example, this one uh, plus 1 and minus 1. So, this will be plus this will have plus 1 minus 1 means minus j this one, but the second term will vanish because there will be no h because this is plus 1 and this is minus 1. And similarly, when s prime is minus 1 s, s is plus 1 this will also vanish. So, there will be no h in the off diagonal terms which is just e to the minus beta j. So, the matrix then looks like uh, simple uh, it is just a 2 by 2 matrix uh, p equal to uh, uh, e to the power beta j plus h uh, e, e to the power beta j minus h e to the power b minus beta j e to the power minus beta j this is a symmetric matrix. Okay. Now you can uh, just uh, look at uh, look at how you can recast this uh, the summation uh, in the partition function on the right hand side. This is really interesting. So you can check for yourself. You can actually do it and uh, check it for yourself that you you just put this uh, matrix here and you will see that uh, this summation uh, on the right. S1, S2, Sn uh, is basically S1, P, S2, S2, P, S3, S3, P, S4, 
so on s n minus 1 p s n. Okay. Uh, and then s n and then s n p uh, s 1. Now, this last one uh, comes from the periodic boundary condition where we have identified s n plus 1 equal to s 1. So, it is uh, now the spins are like on a ring on a ring. So, this is the first spin this is the nth spin. So, this is n this is 1 uh, 2 3 and so on and the n plus 1 is the same as n. So, this is like a ring now the topology is a ring <coughs> this is the periodic boundary condition that we used in uh, uh, born von Karman boundary condition as well. So, this um, this is just that periodic boundary condition put in here. So, this is P B C. <coughs> now, the interesting thing to note is that there are the, this sum for example, sum over S 2 where where does S 2 appear S 2 appears only here and here. So, I can actually take this S 2 sum somewhere here which is what I let me just do. So, I have S 1 P then I do this S 2 sum. So, let me just do it let me S 2 then S 3 right P S 3 P S 3. S 3. Okay. Now, look at this this is just a cat and bra. So, this kind of things S S sum over S is basically identity from quantum mechanics. So, so that means, I can actually do it for every of these uh, I will I can also do for S 3 which has an S 3 here uh, then uh, P then S 4. Right. So, for this also I can uh, take this S 3 sum inside and sum over this and get uh, identity. So, all of these will become identity except for the first one and the last one and what are those you will be left with only S 1 S 1 p to the power n S 1 right and that is exactly what is shown here. So, this summation basically reduces to uh, a trace calculation of the matrix p to the power n. Now, of course, that is also non trivial because this is a 2 by 2 matrix you have to multiply it by n times and uh, find out find that out and if n is very large which is true n is a thermodynamically large number uh, often taken to infinity uh, then it is, this is also not simple, but what is simple is that uh, we know the trace is invariant under uh, uh, a similarity transformation and uh, so what we will do is that we will simply take the uh, diagonalize this matrix P and uh, then the trace of P trace of any matrix is basically the sum over the diagonals. Suppose you diagonalize this matrix then trace of P is just the sum over the diagonals and the trace is invariant this is also this is a trace. So, all I need to know is lambda 1 and lambda 2 the two eigenvalues of this and that they are they are written here as lambda plus and lambda minus. So, let me also do it lambda plus and lambda minus. So, these are the two eigenvalues I need to know that is all. So, the entire problem has reduced to finding out these two eigenvalues which is a 2 by 2 matrix I can find the eigenvalues and this is uh, what the eigenvalues are. <coughs> now, suppose lambda plus is greater than lambda minus then lambda plus to the power n plus 
plus lambda minus to the power n is I can take lambda plus common uh, to the power n common then 1 plus lambda minus to the power n divided by lambda plus to the power n. Now, this quantity so this let me just put a bracket here. Let me put a bracket here. This is the quantity I, I have to calculate, right. <coughs> now, since lambda plus is greater than lambda minus, uh, lambda minus divided by lambda plus less than 1, and if n is very large this quantity actually goes to 0 is exceedingly small if say n is uh, uh, millions or zillions or trillions or whatever 10 to the power 23 is the typical number in a real system then any quantity which is less than 1 if you multiply it by even by 10 times it will become almost 0. So, you can actually ne neglect this term without any problem. <coughs> so, all you are left with is just lambda plus to the power n. <coughs> and that is all you would do. Uh, so, the so these are the two eigenvalues out of which you will only keep one and uh, so, uh, so this will become so called this. Uh, so, you are straight here it is straight away uh, one calculates the free energy is minus k v t log of z and in evaluating z you will uh, <coughs> keep only that lambda plus. So, only z for lambda plus is required and that is uh, what is done here. So, the f that you get is what is written in the bottom. From here you can now calculate m which is the magnetization and that is this this value this formula. You, so, m is sin hyperbolic beta external magnetic field divided by this denominator cos hyperbolic square beta h minus 2 e to the power minus 2 beta j sin hyperbolic 2 beta j. Just look at what happens as h goes to 0. <coughs> at 0 field external field is 0. As external field goes to 0 sin hyperbolic uh, term goes to 0 this goes to 1 this goes to 0. So, you have m going to 0. So, now look at the result it is very different from what we got from the mean field theory. So, in mean field theory at a particular temperature at any finite temperature uh, which is where we are now beta is uh, taken to be finite. Uh, so, T is finite here. So, that means, uh, m goes to 0 at any finite temperature as, as long as h goes to 0. So, there is no spontaneous magnetization at any finite uh, temperature that is what this is. Remember, as beta goes to infinity of course, then this will not work and that is exactly what happens at T equal to 0. At T equal to 0, only at T equal to 0, you will find there is a finite magnetization at any other t you can see that. Uh, so, this is beta j equal to non zero the dashed curve is for any beta j non zero uh, and the uh, this curve is for beta j equal to uh, <coughs> when uh, t goes to 0 this 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 straight line. So, this will become a vertical straight line at beta equal to 0. So, so this will just become a vertical line at beta equal at beta equal to infinity at any finite temperature it will be like this. So, this will be m versus h. So, this is t equal to 0 and this is t greater than 0 as of course, as field if field is finite of course, then uh, you will have a finite magnetization that is true because field field will align. <coughs> but when we discuss spontaneous magnetization we mean that without the absence of field. Okay. 
So, and that is a result that we get here, which is dramatically different from the result which is uh, at um, in the mean field theory. So, the mean field theory is not correct here, it does not give us the right result. The reason for that is that in low dimensions entropy the fluctuation due to temperature leads to an entropy. So, f is u minus t s remember and only at t equal to 0 entropy contribution is uh, 0, I mean you do not have any entropy contribu contribution. Whereas, uh, at any finite temperature the free energy has an entropy contribution and it is true that at one dimension of Ising in Ising model uh, the entropy contribution always wins at any finite temperature and makes the system disordered and uh, you have no chance of having an ordered state spontaneously ordered state and that is exactly what uh, uh, the exact result tells us that. Uh, and so, these are uh, 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 some results the you can calculate free energy, internal energy, specific heat, entropy everything because these are all exact results. Uh, this is how it looks. Remember this specific heat curve, which is again looking like a Schottky anomaly, because you have a state with two levels plus bit plus. Uh, see, there is this uh, plus h times uh, s, so plus h and g mu b plus h and minus h for spin up and spin down, a two-level system. So again at uh, uh, some some scale of temperature there will be a peak. <coughs> so, that is what is uh, happening. And then of course, it is it falls off. The free energy of course, goes uh, larger with uh, uh, with temperature negative and large. Uh, internal energy energy uh, starts from a minus 1 say in this in this normalization and it uh, approaches towards uh, a smaller value. And uh, the entropy as, as I said entropy at 0 temperature is of course, 0, but then at finite temperature entropy will just again become uh, s, uh, uh, s will become k log uh, k uh, log k b log 2 j plus 1 which is 2 here. So, this is what uh, the entropy will approach to. <coughs> at high temperature the the spins will sample all sta all the po possible two two, uh, two states it has so the total number of states will be 2 to the power n and log of that will be n log 2 and s by n uh, is basically k log 2 <coughs> so the, so that's the result that uh, uh, exact solution tells us and it is very very different from uh, the mean field result. The trouble is that in mean field one does not distinguish between uh, any dimensions or anything and it replaces all the fluctuations uh, to 0, it sets all the fluctuations to 0 and here in low dimensions is the fluctuation that is very important and as, as shown by the exact calculation the fluctuation kills the order and there is no spontaneous order at any finite temperature for Ising model in one dimension. So, that is a result which I want you to remember that low dimensional systems are dangerous because there are there is huge fluctuation and that fluctuation has to be taken into account if you want to do a theory on to understand those models. <coughs>